Hey, hey. Hello. I see a bu bunch of miscrits here. <laughs> nice shirt. <laughs> and it's got to be one of them blood angels on top of that. Yeah. Boomers. Sorry, guys. Hey, whoa, talk about the beard. <laughs> oh, I know, eh? Quarren beard. The corn beard. It reminds me of those, uh, the crazy old miners that yes. get lost in, like, the mines and all of a sudden comes out. Miner 649er. <laughs> The old, uh, the old prospector in a lot of his old cartoons with the big cowboy hat that just yeah. weaves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Luke, we don't hear your audio. I didn't realize this doesn't, work on, uh, this doesn't realize this doesn't work on Facebook or uh, on uh, Firefox, only on Chrome. Yeah, I noticed that. And then on uh, Mac Mojave, you need to allow it in the system preferences and then allow it in the browser as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to Yeah. When I see, I see it on my phone, I'm like, why is it working in Firefox? Like, oh, fuck. Really? Yeah. All, it's always something, right? Yeah. So, uh, there's a couple other people that are supposed to join us. They can join us when they do. If not, well, we tried. Uh, but uh, I wanted to start off the Miscrits YouTube channel with a, um, a little fireside uh, chat about uh, 9th edition. All the... Uh, the cool things that were released this week about it, including the uh, the box that revealed today. Yeah, um, so for our viewers, uh, let's just introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm the host of Miss Crits. I've been gaming, uh, started with Warhammer uh, 40k Rogue Trader back in the early 90s. Um, all because of an orc uh, battle wagon I saw in White Dwarf number 128. From there on, I've been screwed. And, well, everybody around me gets screwed because I suck them into gaming and buying miniatures and playing these things with me. <laughs> I helped. <laughs> yeah, you're an enabler. I really am. So, I how about we go to you next, Joe? <laughs> um, so, I got into the hobby uh, very haphazardly. It was not bought for me. It was bought for my brother. Um, my dad had no interest and passed it off to me to teach him how to play. And I just really enjoyed the models. I grew up playing D&D &D with my older brothers. And then I ended up managing the store in Ottawa for uh, almost 14 years, uh, enabling everyone else to get in their hobby and selling them all the plastic toys they needed. Plastic <laughs> crack. <laughs> Pretty much. All right, let's go down to Pat, uh, one of the hosts of the Out of the Basement podcast. Hey, how's it going? Um, actually, I haven't been in Warhammer too too much. I started gaming back in earlier than you, Chris. I mean, we won't say how long, <laughs> but I started off with D and D and all that, and uh, mostly a lot of board games and things. Uh, Warhammer itself only since sixth edition, really. And again, though it's the six, seven, eight, you know, it's like, hey, now get these codexes, now get these armies, now now get this new cool stuff. It's like. I don't need a retirement. I don't need a retirement. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but personally, like I'm more into the hobby aspect of it, the painting and the, the modeling and whatnot. I kind of stopped regularly playing back in around, I want to say, 5th edition. And every time a new edition gets announced, I'm like, oh, this is a perfect time to get back into it. It feels like I, I, yesterday... I'm a, I'm a lore fan. I'm a lore fan. I love the fluff. Like, all the books. Yeah. The horse but I feel like yesterday was 8th edition launch, and we were all waiting outside of the store, talking about it, but that's, yeah. that was, like, seven years ago. Yeah. Well, hey, as an orc oh, guy, it's like, our codex just came out. Our codex yeah. just came out. Yeah. Like three or four years. Is three, it? Yeah, yeah. Three years. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The last four months... Feels like a couple of years in itself. I, I launched two editions of the new store and like three at the old store. I was hired on in fourth, third going into fourth. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Luke? I'm sorry, I'll go pops it on too. <laughs> uh, I started back in the second edition. I was playing the Space Elves. Best Elves, edition. The Eldar. Yeah. Uh, um, 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, it was silly back then. No, 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 no. Well, oh, yeah, orcs yeah. were amazing. You had all the, those like yes. critical misses and exploding things, and like even marines were gritty back then. They weren't just like yeah. these brainwashed things. Hey, hey, we got Matt. Good evening. So uh, yeah, I remember buying my first few things at the store. There used to be Shopper City West. I can't remember the name oh of the store. Oh my god! Yeah, it used to be Smoking Guns. Smoking Guns. Yeah, that's where I bought my first. The very first store I went into, and I feared for my life. <laughs> yeah, that's where I bought my first minis there. But uh, yeah, so I was playing Eldar since Second Edition till about fourth. And then Tau came out around 4th or 5th edition. I can't remember when it came out. So I loved the look of those. Bought an army of Tau, slowly. Uh, came back to, in 7th edition, uh, Chris actually had some Blood Angels. And I was like, I always hated the Space Marines. Space Marines. I hate him, hate him, hate him. <laughs> and then I bought some. Because if you can't beat him, might as well join him. And uh, from then, uh, my Blood Angel army is getting really big compared to everything else. Actually, my Eldar, I'm like, I was looking at it today, it's like, man, I need to buy a bunch of new minis because there's <laughs> no way I could compete with those. I mean, I have Guardians, and Dire Avengers, and Fire Dragons, uh, a few of the Wraith Guard, a few Wraith Lords, and a Fire Prism, and that's it. I got nothing else. So, I mean... I would get my ass yeah, out of the it, plane really. so quick. So, yeah, I don't even think they have fire di fire dragons anymore either, so I have no idea. But, uh, yeah, they're all pewter. <laughs> they're all pewter. So. Well, at least they're not the old <laughs> lead ones. I still have I still have some Harlequins from the lead days. I've got a few lead ones as well. I've got a couple of orcs lead. I got some lead orcs, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey kids, yeah. go play really with this. Go play with these ones. The, one, the ones that could be used in 40k or fantasy way back. Then. Oh, I've got a bunch of old Nurgle ones like that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How about yeah, my my blood? Yeah, my blood angels are the biggest army. I've got a mix of Primaris and the regular old crews there. But yeah, so I'm baby Marines representing. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I'm still, I still hate two of the primaris <laughs> Yeah, to, to me it's just a money gimmick. <laughs> Brent? I, I hate Marines more than anyone, and there's even one or two Marines in that new box. I'm like, man, I kind of want to paint those. And Brent knows how much I hate painting Marines. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to I play Mario Kart with that new, with that new ATV. Yes. Yeah, but don't hit a bump. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, again, as an orc pet, I'm like, as an orc player, why can't orcs get something like this? I mean, it's... it's, it's... You can, we're just going to loot it. <laughs> Yeah, that, that that poor driver. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You see? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Orcs got all those great so new vehicles. Buggies. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the the great, new orcs are look awesome. Great looking new vehicles. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. Not great in the game. We'll we'll see in night. I mean, the, the Gorka Morka truck was awesome. I still have one kicking. The the best though, <laughs> the best thing ever for 40k, which is the thing that got me into the, the hobby, was the original battle wagon. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. cool. With the picket fences around it. And... Yep. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh, man. So, Brent, up yeah. to you. Uh, I've been in the hobby, back in the hobby now, I think, just under five years. Uh, I started in the early 90s as well. I didn't start with 40K, though. I started with Epic. Because <gasps> um, oh. I, I had a pool table. <laughs> and before I even learned to play the game, I just spent tons of money on all the epic stuff and i just set out these huge battles and uh one day my my older brother's friend showed up at the house and he was like oh you like this come down to my house and see this and i went down and he had everything road trader like this guy was a collector even way back then and it just sucked me right in uh, and i played until god 2003 2002 so that was what fourth? Yeah, I'm yeah. They... All mine. I've got a box with <laughs> nice. eight thousand points of epic orcs right here. I just sold I all still, the epic orcs. <laughs> I still have an epic army. I have a battlefleet gothic army still. Yes. Uh, I mean, I was a skirmish guy. I got old Necromunda stuff. Oh, yeah. I've got old Mordheim stuff. Yeah. Um, I just on eBay there last week picked up a whole bunch of Digga knobs. Oh, man. And uh, <laughs> and Humies from Gorka Morka. Oh, uh, see that so, that breaks yeah. my heart because when Gorka Morka came out, that's when I took a break out of the hobby completely. So I've got nothing oh, from Gorka Morka. Yeah. I bet 
like when I, I started in second edition and I kind of like they taught me how to play and I was like, ah, oh, this is kind of cool. And then they showed me orcs. I was like, why didn't you show me these first? Yeah. <laughs> and so I like just like them, everybody like, else, I'm just like ninth edition is released. I'm like, this is a perfect time for me to get back in because yeah. I jumped in at eighth edition, played it for like six months, and I was like, ah, I'm going to go back to fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now it's like this is released, and I'm like, all right, perfect time to make a catechin army. And then the next day, they're like, infantry is not going to be as good as vehicles. Yeah, I'm tanks. Like, God damn it. Yeah. I've never run a tank right army. I'm very sad. <laughs> right now, everybody like the at least the meta down in Kingston is so infantry heavy. And, yeah. Like I'm, I'm also to blame. Like I've been Thousand Suns since second edition. And I've got a pile of sun sitting behind me that I feel. So it's like every tank has been shelved. The only thing I brought was infantry and dreads. Yeah. Time to, time to dust off the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Damn it, now i got to buy more. I mean... Oh, uh, oh darn, Jace eh? Knows I, Jace knows <laughs> I started buying some uh, orc trikes and stuff like that, so... Yeah, I, I was lucky. A few years back, I found a bunch of uh, eBay auctions for... Uh, just the, the bits for all the orc bikes. So there was like an auction where it was like the seats and another one was the handlebars. I got everything out of there. I got so many of them now. Nice. Is there everyone like leaves close to the game? <laughs> wow, nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, there's a... That's amazing. There's a... Marine. Marine there's a so, because my Thousand Sons are post-heresy rules, but pre-heresy paint. That's I had to cool. Figure out how to do spawn and make them not look like mutants. Yeah. Right. Hey, JC, how about you? You're kind of quiet up there. Just letting everybody else have their turn. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, for the hobby, I remember years ago when a friend of mine tried to get me into Mech Warrior and BattleTech, and I was just like, <laughs> uh, just the video game is awesome enough for me, but the tabletop, I wasn't interested in buying a bunch of metal models. Uh, and then, very nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> then uh, I was I was working with Patrick and there was a buddy of ours uh, and the two of them would constantly talk about the Horus Heresy books and like I was like oh I gotta I want to learn more about what this is I want to find out what they're talking about they're my buddies at work let's have something in common and uh, went online and that's whenever they were selling the old Chaos Dreadnoughts okay and on the the Games Workshop website it was like the neon colors and everything was like crazy i was like that's what i want i want that so much and then i started looking into it and i was like holy cow a metal dreadnought is 70 dollars. who can afford this game I, I, I can't do this this is crazy so that that dream kind of went away and then uh about two three years later uh, another one of patrick's friends like one of us uh we started playing magic and putting in a bunch of money into magic the gathering and then we went this is stupid. Like, yeah. why not play something better? Because and something that we can actually like. If, if it gets wet, it might not fully fall apart. And uh, so that's so I went online and I found someone selling some Raven Guard uh, tactical marines. And uh, so I was like, oh, okay. Well, might as well buy some secondhand models to start. That's why you picked Raven Guard. So that's exactly why I picked Raven Guard. And after I picked them up, I was, I was asking Patrick, and he told me a bit more about the lore. And I was like, oh, this, I really like the sneakiness aspect of it. <laughs> so I started building up on that. And I was like, you know what? It's also smart. I can just rattle can it black and then put a few colors on it and I'm good to go. <laughs> and like for the longest time, that's, that was my quality of paint. It was really bad. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I was like, well, you know what? I'm kind of like our friend Phil started collecting space Marines and, and, uh, Phil has got almost every armor. Yeah, 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 well, he, he just went gung ho and bought everything. As as I was thinking about making this, I was like, hmm. Well, we got to talk about our main army, right? I've got miniatures from every single <laughs> army except for uh, Adeptus Custodes. They're the only ones I don't own any miniatures okay. of. Yeah. Oh, even I have a custody. <laughs> I have a character to paint. Yeah, but you worked there for... That's the problem. I accepted it. Yeah, yeah I, I, have, yeah. I have one because it lost... Uh, when 8th came out, I was playing Guard and Tau, and my crew charged a unit of Custody Terminators. I can't remember what they're called. And uh, the, the crew killed one in close combat, 
So the, oh, my opponent, Dylan, was like, I hate this so much. He's like, just take this miniature. I don't even want it in my army. Really? <laughs> oh, that sounds like Dylan. <laughs> Check me have a couple because I have the hor- um, the, 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 box. Prefer- the the box set yeah. or for the game, the, the, that game. And that's where it's like the, the 30K, Thousand Suns, and Space Wolves with some custodies. And yeah, it was the Sisters of Silence, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Also, that was so, uh, funny earlier, Brent said skirmish games and mentioned uh, Battle Fleet, because it's like, I don't know if I'd count my fleet as skirmish anymore. <laughs> I think I've got 40 brute ram ships. Too many little uh, just go outside, pick up a bunch of gravel, throw it in some super glue, throw some bits in there, mix There's it all up and fleet, yeah. rattle can it. There you go. There's an orc. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But uh, so after a while, we started, uh, like I was talking with Patrick, and Patrick want to start buying some some 40k models and then we're like you know what okay let's figure out which armies we're going to play so that we don't all just play space marines and uh so patrick's like i'm gonna go orcs i'm like fine you know what i'll simple, get some tyranids simple play. <laughs> and so i started collecting tyranids uh did not enjoy playing them as much <laughs> as i thought i would i i liked make building them and painting them but paint them. yeah yeah it, it just for me the, the hobby really is like i like to collect i like to paint but I really like to play, and it doesn't have to be a competitive army, but it just has to be able to... Hold its ground? I have to, I have to like the, that. There has to be something about it. Um, and I actually only just got rid of my Tyranid army a few weeks ago, um, right before Ninth got fully announced. So I was like, yes, excellent. And then it was before, like, I, I had a bunch of monstrous creatures in it, so it was very good for the, the guy who picked it up. But yeah, it's uh, been playing, and then our circle of friends just grew and grew and grew people started coming in walking out and then uh, i think it was i met you guys uh it was patrick phil and i in devram yeah we went to the games workshop store mm-hmm. well that was funny because you the, and i knew each other already through the 501st yeah for the first, so we met each other through the 501st and that's so i recognized you because uh, i had uh i had helped out with with your chewy once yep and uh, yeah, it was it was the chaos, it was the Space Marine the, special edition Space Marine. Yeah, it was the one from the Rogue the Trader 30th cover. Anniversary, the thirtieth anniversary. Yep. Was it the thirtieth anniversary? I've, I still yeah. have it yeah. still sealed upstairs. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. We got that too. Smart, smart. We painted ours. Patrick and I went splits on it because he had to buy yeah. a certain amount of product. Yeah, but I still have the original box set enough, of so those. Together. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. I made and it very easy to put them on my. Cool. Yeah, it was it was super simple for for us to, to spend way too much money. Oh yeah, we spent a lot of money, all of us that day, and Joe was to blame. Oh yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Oh, every time. <laughs> How about you, Matt? How'd you get started? I the words to prove it. <laughs> Sorry, what, Chris? How about how did you get started? Uh, so I I got started in forty k uh, in second edition. Uh, it was towards the end of second but I got a job at a game store in Delaware. Nice. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm an import. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Canadian now, but, at the, you know, a few years back I was not. It's okay. We like you anyways. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so um, it was – I started playing 40K, and then I started doing all the ordering from the store for 40K, and I – I picked up Thousand Suns first, and Thousand Suns have been my primary army since second edition. Um, and I've, see, I'm, I'm not Space Wolf, so I can't talk to you there. That's it. That's, that's all right. <laughs> Roy Chair. <laughs> Roy Chair. <laughs> but uh, then, so I, I kind of put the Suns on the shelf for a little while and picked up a whole lot of Death Guard. Um, they're over behind, they're off camera right. Yeah. Um, so I've got about 4,000 points of Death Guard uh, and a Warhound Titan for my Death Guard. Ooh, nice. Nice. Um, I've got two different Knight armies. Um, so the one behind me are... Are you your big stuff? Oh, wow. Holy... Damn! That's a nice conversion. That's gorgeous. So the robes are all hand sculpted. The mask is 3D printed. (laughs) Oh, Oh, that's cool. Nice. And the uh, on the side lights up. You have to come see this. That's awesome. 
Wow. Okay, with him on the table. So he's actually only standing on the one toe. Yeah. Uh, oh wow. Uh, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it makes me so nervous. You don't understand. <laughs> it's a quarter-inch steel base, and he has a three-sixteenth steel pin. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. That goes up. That goes up into his leg. So yeah, yeah he's solid. He's okay. solid. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's not going anywhere, but it's uh real leather wrapped around his handle. Wow. Uh, okay, but do you have do you have speakers in there so you can play some sound? Yeah, you know, sorry. Like, like that, man. That's, you know, yeah, you failed there. Come on. You failed there. <laughs> <laughs> That's I don't know if anybody's ever, I don't know if anyone's ever played Darksiders. Yeah, so right away I could see that it was death. <laughs> yeah. So I did all four of the knights as the four horsemen from Darksiders. Amazing. Oh, and that was that was my army. So the display board was the Shard Council with the three big rock spires. Cool. And then there was a lava lake that I did out of uh, silicon and put LEDs all through that so that it pulsed. Wow. <laughs> so, ninth edition, guys. <laughs> yeah. Thoughts? Okay, so... I am so can't... Like, the Primaris, everyone... Does, who, who actually like the Primaris? Um, I do. I hate Marines. Uh, I have always yeah. hated Marines. Uh, I found that the Primaris were just a money gimmick thing to yeah, exactly. to sell more models because the Marines and weren't like, selling here, as well. Here's our lore. Here's our but, lore. Ten thousand years. Also now shoving these guys. But that new captain and that new um, uh, the Justicare. Wow. Justicare. Yeah. 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 We got the yeah. flat sword. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'll end up painting one for someone at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just waiting for the commission on that one. I'm looking at you, I Luke. Like <laughs> I, mean, I like the models of them. I like, I like the way they look because they're, you know, it just. I feel like that should would have just been that. Here's the Space Marines upgraded to what they should be like. For yeah. Size. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so ninth, um, like, then, then all the Marine players would have been mad that they had to buy new models anyway. So yeah. Really anyway, no way. They're, so, they're mad. They're, they're, they're Marine players. Marine players are always mad. Well, I was gonna say it's not a Games Workshop thing. Here's a new edition. By the way, these guys are better than those guys are now. Oh, crap. Well, you know, considering I just want the assault troopers, the new ones with jump packs, so I can make That's... them as death company. Don't worry, Wait. they're coming in. You know oh, they will. Oh, well, yes, they release sure. right considering you guys brought up the the miniatures right away, the Necrons. Like, I play Necrons they as well. So nice. I love Necrons. Uh, I love the new warriors, uh, the new characters. But I hate crab-legged miniatures. This is coming from being a War Machine player as well, and I played Cricks, and all their ma their ma miniatures were pewter. Trying to get crab legs to stay on a base was brutal. Also, you have to admit it's not really a great design. No, right? like crab legs are like treads make sense, you know, other stuff. Crab legs are yeah, they're more versatile. You can walk up cliffs. Come on. They're just for the creep factor. They look so <laughs> creepy. Yeah, and the so the really tall and like the yeah. like the War the of the Worlds thing. Portions. Yes. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, the yeah, War of the Worlds yeah. walkers. It's they're they're trying to make them. I get it. They're trying to change their aesthetic to make them more alien, to make them more you know outside the box, like creepier. Yeah. And really fitting more, having the models match the lore of what people see and feel when they see Necron. Yeah, well, it's yeah. funny because yeah. when Necrons came out originally, they they had some of the worst models I've ever seen. Like, the original it's metal ones good. were horrible. Um, Slave ones were good. I was listening to uh, Forge the Narrative's podcast, latest podcast the other day, and the guys were talking about Necrons, and for some reason they thought the, uh, the, plastic, the green plastic rod ones were the first uh, versions of them. But no, the original ones were really nasty. And Solid pewter. Yeah, and they didn't fit the lore. They didn't fit the world. Then came the plastic rod ones, and that fit a little bit more, I find. The new ones, especially with, like, I was talking to Luke uh, this morning during the uh, the announcement. The I think they're called Crypto Thralls. They look like the, uh, the ghosts from Age of Sigmar. That yeah, fits. That looks really awesome. Yep. Yeah. 
they're cool. I think so it ended up being the second Necron army I painted. I did one for like a staff challenge, like do an army in 24 hours thing. And I did 1,500 points of Necrons and played them and didn't like them. Love the flayed ones, but I think this time around I'm going to I'm gonna pick up some more. Yeah. They do look good. I they hate reanimation protocols. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. On a game. Well, hey, like on a, an actual game. It sucks. Mr. Death Guard there uh, with the, hey, look, uh, feel no pain, and you know, I'll just keep rolling fives See, above. And I'm just mad that I sacrificed my family to Nurgle. A week, every time that I played, like I'm like, okay, there's a game coming up on Sunday. One of my kids gets sick on Tuesday. I'm like, well, I'm gonna be blessed. And, it's gonna and yet be you're amazing. not willing to sacrifice them to come play at Kessel Run. Yeah, a, I don't a, want. I don't want to bless my kids with COVID. And, and speak, no. speaking of which, JC, uh, wasn't the first game of AOS you ever played with Nurgle as well? <laughs> it was. It was. It's, the, it's still the only game of AOS I ever played. Seriously? Oh man, I gotta bring you. Well, once we're allowed yeah. out and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got. Uh, I, I don't know if you can see it here on this back shelf. That's my huge uh, Empire of Free Cities. Age of Sigma Army there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to yeah, link to that. Cool. He's got some pictures on his Instagram. They're yeah. freaking sweet. Well, Chris, I have to say, I, lo I love your setup for the painting that you have. Your, yeah. Your whole serious setup. That's. I'm jealous. I'm like, uh, well, I one, kicked one of my kids out of this room to take it back. So, <laughs> when, once uh, once we're allowed together, wait until you see the actual game cave that we set up in here. So who was oh, I saw, I saw, uh, I saw some of your pictures, and I saw your uh, the table that you made and everything. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. Yeah, it's it's awesome. There's uh, the TV in it for D and D. There's uh, we got lighting for filming. We got lighting for the games. Uh, there's well, the keg with the Miskrits logo, full of rum. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. yeah. So. Jeez, uh, hey, uh, Chris. <laughs> Where I'll be. Yeah, I just, I just need to set up, like, an extra door directly into the basement so that my wife doesn't see people coming in all the time. <laughs> no, I, I'm down here by myself. I need to play music and movies. That's all it is. Yeah. I'm watching YouTube. It's voices from people on YouTube. I th I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, who's, who's ordered the pre ordered the book? Who's pre ordered the rule books? I have. Not yet. Not yet. I'm not painting two boxes on. for one guy, and part of the deal is he's going to read the rule book. Oh, nice. Second. Nice. Good deal. So, um, Jace, did you actually pre order the. You were pre ordered the box set as well, didn't you? No, I didn't. I, no. I didn't pre order the box set. Just normally with a new edition, I. Well, for the, the sixth edition, I went Raven Guard. <laughs> It's not. Uh, certain it, stores not are not kind of breaking the rules, if you will. Out of the, out of the box is taking, taking names. Kessel Run, yeah. uh, Red Dragon. Like, oh. A lot of them are doing the, yeah. we're not allowed to, but... Oh, they're just taking, yeah, okay. So well, I, I was at uh, Out of the Box this afternoon, and I was talking to the guys. They don't even know the prices yet, so... Exactly, no. yeah. Okay. yeah. I was worried I missed something. Yeah, I'm on night shift. I no, slept they, most of the day, so... Yeah, Red, Red Dragon had a, a deal where it's like, if you pre-order now... And we assume this is the price of the book. If you put that money down now, if the book comes out cheaper, then you get your you get store credit. And if it comes out more expensive, you don't pay more money. You're guaranteed good, for that much money. A little bit of a risk for them because it's like yeah, because well, we we were taking a look at the size of the box and the amount of plastic in it. I've got a feeling it's going to be close to the same price as the last uh, Necromunda box. Yeah, yeah two eighty. Uh, three yeah. something. Oh, three well, something, yeah. I think it'll be three something. I do have that box. Red Dragon yeah, me too. was saying is, uh, if you pre it, it was 200 bucks for their yeah. yeah. They're going to get well, smacked by Games Workshop. Yeah. Well, they didn't, yeah. That, well, that's, uh, that's your but I was going to say, because also as a Space Wolf guy, I was looking at the Prophecy of the Wolf one there. Yep. With the, uh, it, Jace has the new Gaz. The oh, I need McCary. And I have like, a oh. oh, you do? Yeah, I do. Uh, and then I'm looking at okay, Of course, I have two. Primaris Marines and Ragnar, and they're, they're trying to make Ragnar almost as big as the Primaris Marines. Like, uh. But well, they Primaris them, didn't they? Yeah, they did Primaris them. Did they? Yep. Yeah, they, well, yeah they he didn't crossed, the, crossed the, the rubric. The rubric. rubric. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, because didn't he die in one of the lore books or something? Like, you know, the. He sort of died. Yeah, he, he did in one of the, the Space Wolf trilogy books, I believe. Yeah. yeah um, I think, uh. Yeah, so then they brought him. He was. Put in suspended, 
and then they brought him back from suspended animation by transferring his consciousness into oh boy. <laughs> a Primaris. Yeah, I, I know it's the 40th uh, millennium, but still, come on. <laughs> <laughs> just just grasping like the dreadnoughts, just, just saying. Yeah, but that's not transferring the consciousness, that's sort of like, sort of... That's putting the body in it. It's a, it's like, a sarcophagus. Like, it's in, in, the it's Emperor... A, it's just a back to tank. It's a really cool back to tank. The emperor is a lie. <laughs> you know they've never co- transferred consciousness into a primaris body. It was like, oh, uh, that's where I was like, they just, you could have found another way. Put him into a dreadnought, make him a new Bjorn. You know, make him that would be kind of cool. Whatever. You know that would have made sense, right? It's like he's he's a new Bjorn, whatever. But this transform into a primaris body, like. Uh, so what do you guys but, think okay. of? Of the uh, the new table sizes that they announced. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, I mean, Smaller I like tables. That I like that it's a minimum. Yes. So I, yeah, the, I think. Go ahead. So somebody they updated it to to forty four by sixty as a minimum table size. Yep. Yeah. Oh. And if you look at the table sizes that they've okay. announced, they're IKEA table sizes. Oh really? Oh. Yep. Nice. Okay. To make it more accessible okay. to people. I, think people. I think people got way too worked up about it. Oh, yeah, 100%. Warhammer players getting worked up about something. Are you sure, Brett? That never happens. Oh, Joe, any fanboy for anything. I don't know. I, I I guess I feel spoiled with some of the games that I've been playing, like uh, Marvel Crisis Protocols and Fallout and whatnot. I'm getting used to the three foot by three foot game surface where I can actually yeah. have yeah. several of them set up on a table for people. Whereas yeah. with a four by six, especially in this room, I barely have enough room for that, and well, bigger people well, Jason, to sit around. Tastes like, like a kill team. Yeah, because it's you know smaller it's set up and it's but a if faster you, game. If you take if you do the ma- the the math, the new table sizes are three uh, kill team table uh, boards next to each other. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, They've actually suggested doing that. Why yeah. Oh, work really? at the box sets they already sell of the boards. Yeah. And the boards, how, be, how they're like. One side is one terrain. If you flip it over, they all have the same common. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one thing that I I, I, I really set up, the thing I really wish that they'd bring in from Kill Team because it almost looked like Kill Team was going to be a precursor to this new edition, anyways, is the activations. I really like the activation system in Kill Team. I think so. The activations would have been interesting, but I find in a game like Warhammer where you have multiple units. It's it would have just been really difficult to remember. It's like, did I activate this group? That's that's that why you got tokens. It also slows things down really a lot, though, right? Because you have, like, yeah. especially with orcs. I've got, you know, 180 orcs with a whole bunch of different groups. It's like, uh, crap, did I or not? And then have to activate each area. Like, no. Ah, you do like um, we used to do it when we used to play at uh, the Games Workshop at Bayshore. You just grab a handful of orcs and just drop them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I, I, I was reading some of Jason's put he mentioned some of the rules for uh, armor now has changed a yes. little bit. Actually, I'll let you guys There's talk about good. the armor. I'm just going to go get the power supply because I'm already down to 26% battery. <laughs> oh, jeez. <Yeah. laughs> PC, baby, instead of a laptop. Um, but yeah, I was reading some of the armor stuff, so... Uh, I, Jace, you want to take it off for that? Like, so, okay. The uh, vehicles, a lot of people were mad that facing didn't come back. Again, yes, I'm I... totally fine with that. It's This is a miniature war game. I don't need to... <sighs> to it's uh, Come on, I see your, the hey, blood of your tank. I can accept, and I'm gonna shoot weapon. The tank. Oh, I can accept I'm a chain sword as a weapon, but I damn it, I want my facings. <laughs> yeah, it just... Anyway, I like that people uh, trying to streamline anything that could be an argument, you know. 14 years of watching grown people argue over, I mean, the, the, this angle, it's like, guys, it's a game with plastic toy men. You're yeah, rolling dice on a table. Like, even you're playing when they simplified fun, right? it, it, it didn't stop any arguments. No. No. <laughs> no, uh, there's just different arguments. The only thing I want to see it's just people shaking their head instead of arguing over shots. Yeah. It's like, you know, the I would just listen, would just listen to the banter and just be like, why? <laughs> What's the left, no, ten- left spawns and shooting through the side of the tank over to the right. It, yeah. I don't get it, but it just it makes it cleaner. It just makes it, it faster. It, it, and... it does it makes it faster, but I'm still like an old fashioned old fashioned one where it's like, no, no, like with battle tech and stuff like that. You know, okay, yeah. you yeah. had to turn to have your facing, and the thing is, it worked better in battle tech because they used uh, hexes, hex. right? Hex. Yeah. So it's easy on a hex map to go. Okay, here's the spread. On battle on battle maps, you don't have the hex facing, so it's all the 
Okay, you pull out your, you know, proctor, you're, you're like, okay, that's about 45. And then, yeah, then you get the arguments of, like, well, no, this, this partial unit's only in that. Like, if so, it was at least, like, X-Wing. On X-Wing, their bases are all marked off with, like, the different angles. Yeah, and that that's what I like. Same, same with Legion as well. Wing. Yeah. yeah. X-Wing is still difficult if you're shooting at something that's, like, at on the third distance away, then you're still, like, using that range finder and just trying to get that right angle. Yeah. But no, uh, yeah. so for vehicles, the biggest change so far that we know is the uh, the close combat difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the the bad touch is no longer so bad anymore. Well, the thing is, okay, as just again going with armor, if it's an 85 ton tank or a vehicle, I'm sorry, unless you're you know Terminator, it's a bunch of Terminators standing in the way. You're not stopping it from moving forward. No. You're squished. You know, and then that's why I'd love to see introduce a nice simple rule like, okay, if your units are this, it, it's throwing it's throwing damage against you. If you have a dodge, you can scatter, but your your units broken up because I don't think we'll you. ever see King that. that. I don't uh, think we'll King ever Shock see that. Because like, Shock was garbage. well, think no, back to to wrong. first and second edition, right? When we had the acetates and the front facing armor, side armor. There were so many rules. People just refused to use vehicles because it was just too complicated. If you played with more than 30 models, it was insane, like... Yeah. Well, but no, but, but it's, it's just more like, just simple to apply, like, okay, a bunch of orcs aren't stopping a, you know, a Lehman Russ. <laughs> if they're not, they're getting squished over, you know, they're in the treads now. I just, I'm sorry, but I've played enough games with friends where they've turned around and goes, I'm going to use this new tank, or I'm going to use this uh, this jet, and we've never had jets or, like, like, flyers or anything, and you go, okay... What are the rules for that? And they go, I don't know, but I yeah. assume it does this. And you're like, okay, well, why are you fielding this this flyer if you don't know how to yeah. play? Same thing with tanks. I'm going to use this tank. How okay? How do I kill it? I don't know. You go read the rule no, book. You have to know the like, rules. Right? I'm sorry. Yeah, if you bring well, it up, you have to you have to be able to say how the rules exist. But like I said, but just then if you have three pages of rules that you have to read on like really quick to figure out how to shoot a tank. I'm sorry, that's just, it slows the game down too much. All right. if I'm playing we game now need to have to bring your rule book, your codex book, your FAQ, and other oh, yeah. stuff already, right? So yeah. it's, it's... Well, that's one thing that's going to be great in 9th edition, because they announced that if you own the codex, you'll be able to have the, uh, the digital copy the as well. With you? Digital copy, yes. And they, really, they announced the app. Yes. As an Age of Sigmar player, I love the app. The, the, Age, yes. of, the Age of Sigmar app was great, because it was made by a third party, just a fan... And they ended up hiring him, and he's amazing. Cool. Like, the stuff he's done with that app, yeah. let's just hope that the 40K yeah. one is somewhere, anywhere as close to that. The thing with X-Wing, X-Wing Lurch, like, uh, Fantasy Flight, Fantasy, Fantasy Fantasy Flight, Flight Games. Games. Yeah, it's like, here's here's X-Wing. You know, it's on your phone, it gets updated. Yep. You don't have to worry about getting errata, or it's all on your phone. And for right same with, for somebody same like me, team where team. I get all the guys at work to play at lunchtime, something like that's great because I don't have to make the lists for all of them now. <laughs> Here, install this app. You do it. <laughs> yeah, Infinity is great for that too because their app. Oh, every, the Infinity app's insane. Oh yeah, every, so many special rules for every character, and they're all just clickable. It's like, oh, what does this do? Click. Okay, there. It just tells you what it does. Well, Beautiful. I like. I like the digital books for the Games Workshop because Kim yeah. like the codexes because it's the exact same thing. You pull up Space Marine, oh, they get weapons, click, and it tells you all the weapons, yeah. all the profiles, all the special the, rules. The whole control F. F. Yeah, I think that's only Apple devices. I don't think anyone else can get the enhanced editions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but since since you guys mentioned flyers, what do you think of the new flyer rules? I haven't seen it. That I haven't I like seen. They, Luke I like is excited. Okay, like so for, 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 for your viewers, give the background. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've never run viewers. flyers, but I might uh, you know, break out. So one of the big things for flyers now is they can actually fly off the table and come back. On a different edge. <laughs> like they used to be able to. Oh, and it doesn't... So I like the fact that when they fly off the board edge, any board edge, be back they don't have to enter from your own deployment Yeah. They can enter anywhere so long as it's mm -hmm. nine inches away. Yeah, Which that makes the, the, the yeah, they're true. Like they're jumping in from higher altitude. They're coming down yeah. where they want to. It makes yeah. sense. Okay, so, I have a big question. Will orcs get dropships now? No. Mm. 
Orcs wouldn't have drop ships. They would just like put rockets on themselves. <laughs> well, that's what it's like they they hollow out a piece of metal. That's right. Yeah. Well, guys inside and just like just have it down. Pat, I do have good news for you though. Uh, the the guys at uh, Deadly Print Studios uh, just released a bunch of damage flyer effects that you can stick magnets in. I'm reviewing them. It'll be on the the channel next week for the reviews. But if you okay, want cool. some of these for your orc flyers, I'll uh, send you a bunch of them afterwards. Cool. Yeah, thank you. That sounds great. The, uh, I don't have any orc flyers yet, but working on that. I'm I think just I've, gonna, never used, just... I've never built them because I've never used them. Yeah. I almost, I I almost brought them. Everything. Everything. <laughs> I was going to say, though, as an orc player, I'm sort of like, can I just go to Value Village or, or Toys R Us and buy a bunch of stuff just to glue them together? And like, and Get some know, Fisher Price crazy. wings, put it on a boot. As, yeah, yeah, as long as it's not a Folgers. <laughs> Coffee can pretending yeah, it's like working on again. Urgh. I know. Sorry, that's all I had, right? But like, <laughs> it's got five wings, three engines. It flies. Why? Because we believe it will fly. So there you go. The, <laughs> uh, the flyer rule that I think that a lot of people are, are are forgetting about is yes, you can fly off the table and it comes back as uh, as your reserves. Yeah. But those reserve rules are going to be interesting. Where they're what you're not allowed coming in on turn four or higher, right? Yes. Currently in oh, this really? edition. So if you fly yeah, off yeah. on turn three, yeah. is it a turn or two before your flyers come back? And what happens if the game ends at the end of turn four or at the end of turn five? We don't know that stuff yet. So if yeah. the flyer's off the table, that counts as a death. Yeah. Normally. So yeah. it's I'm I'm curious to see because I, I see a lot of people online being like, Yes, I'm gonna fly in, shoot, leave, and they'll never get my guys. Yes, I don't know. I was just looking at Luke's face and I think you just <laughs> burst his bubble. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know I burst his bubble because I'm just gonna—I'm gonna keep bursting his bubble. Yeah, but when me and Jace play, the thing is, I just go all out. I try to take him off the map, and he plays the the strategic Objective. points and objectives, and he wins. I, like last game we played in January, I, he had like three guys left. I had him half a army just just chasing him around in the last roll of dice, and the game ends. I'm like. Oh crap! He outscored me because he played objectives, and I was just like, "You're dying." But no. <laughs> that's the thing I remember. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's something that's going to be really big in Ninth Edition because if you read some of the the new scenarios that they've got, um, they're not just hold like go and hold an objective and sit there. Now they've they've got all sorts of things like run all over the board, do this, do that, and the, the amount of points allocated to each step. Are way higher, so scenarios are going to be super important in ninth edition, I think. And you can tailor your secondary objectives to your army. Yeah. So if you if you have a highly mobile army, then you can take the the objectives that or the secondaries that favor the mobility. Yeah. Or if you have a close combat army, you can really tailor in what would be the best for you or what you feel like would be the easiest to accomplish. So you're not both trying to play the exact same mission. You're trying to play your mission. Yeah, it feels like they, they wonder, took that from Malifaux a bit. <laughs> I wonder how Imperial Knights are going to run with that, because a few of the, the ones that they've released already, it's like, oh, go capture these objectives, and if you can hold more than the... Op like, it's not just hold more. It's like, if you hold one, you get points. If you hold, get two, you get more points. Yeah. Three more points. Well, you're never going to run... Like, well, sorry, you can run more than four, uh, four knights in a list, but it's really difficult, and you're not getting anything else. And especially now that you have to pay CP to bring another army in, an allied force, yeah, that's going to really yeah. hinder them. Especially, it's like I'm really con like I want to see what their secondary objectives are going to that, be. That's right. one thing that I'm curious about because uh, with the we know that they're changing the points values as well. What's well, that gonna yeah? What's that gonna mean to getting extra? Not necessarily. They've only showed they've only showed points for two or three models already, and they they, they said they're doing a readjustment, not just hiking the price up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they did say the points are going up unilaterally yes. across the board. For that was on points. on their podcast as well. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. So cultists going from four points to six points is a huge jump for That's chaos expense. players. That's However, makes big expense. Like it's but when you talk about Primaris Marines going up to twenty points piece for each yeah, primaris yeah. Yep. that's that's a hard hike well, i think one of the one of the reasons for this one force or one squad i i think part of the reason for this is 
I think they want people to be playing at 2,000 points and be able to do the math a lot easier, but still have the amount of figures that tournaments have at their 1850 type points values. Yeah. yeah. To speed up the game. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm That's really great. curious what it's going to do to the knight armies. Horde list, uh, I, I'm just the price increase, the uh, the changes to the, what, CP? the blast weapons. Oh the, yes, weapons. that scares me. Especially, I I started so a new army, new edition. Started picking up orcs, and I'm like, okay, I've painted up 30 orc boys. Yes, I have another have 10 coming in the mail now, and I'm like, okay, this is gonna be great. I'll I'll have my orc boys, and all of a sudden, like, oh, if your squad is six models or more, you're gonna get screwed. I'm like, what about my 20 model squad? Yeah, 30 yeah. Models? I'm uh, thinking the same with my gene stealers. And it gets pushy for orcs. They're meant to have, like, it's all about the amount of boys you have in your horde, right? Like, they don't do six man squad. They no, 30, 40, 50, like. But now they're How saying run 10, 10 boys in a truck and just have a few trucks and that'll be it. And it's, it's no, not going to feel orcish. Uh, but you can always run your, 20, you can run your 20 models. That's fine. Luke's going to get ran over by my 20 orcs. <laughs> uh, oh, Jason. Well, you like, have a death Jason, Shots fired. Shots fired. I, you have a, de you have like a death rate too, fun. don't you, uh, Jace? You have a death rate as well now. I see yep. it up. I've, so I've got some uh, gargants and stuff if you want to borrow them. Um, does anyone know if, kill if killer cans are still going to be the same as they are? They're not that great. I hope so. I have 24 of them. <laughs> I, wonder oh, if they uh, I don't know. I've got about the same amount, but they're all the, the, the old pewter ones. I don't want to carry yeah, them to the store. So what do we have? Like, your opponent. Steve Toonstra's Sisters of Battle Army is all metal. Yep. Yes, it is. And like picking up his fucking box to carry it, and I'm like, why do you do this to yourself? Because he plays the metal dice too. Oh. Yeah, he does. <laughs> so the other big change is going to be the CP. Now that they're everybody gets the same amount based off of the points value, that's going to hurt some armies. Unless some yeah. there's other things that we don't know yet, like my Gene Stealer cult, orcs. They're all armies that are used to getting high amounts of CPs and using them, like, Barrel fast. Guard, yeah. Dark, Dark Elder. A lot of theirs are used before well, the guards really need it, too. Like, to upgrade units. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the guard is really great for the, you know, all the different commands they can give and everything, so they need the command points to be able to make them, you know, more useful. Yeah. As opposed to just being, you know, Ken Well, I, I, think, I think what you're going to see now with a lot of guard armies is going to be... Tanks. Tunnel vision one way or the other. You're not going to be tanks and infantry no. and running both kinds of orders. It's going to be one or the other. Yeah. Oh, we know it's just going to be all tanks. See, Jason, yeah, Luke, yeah. You know, I, I want to introduce the rules where, okay, your Chaos Army, you have your Chaos Marines, there's cultists in the way of your enemy. Shoot them. I'm going to shoot. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what, do we, what do we care? They're yeah, cultists. They're they're men... Yeah. And it's like, same as orcs. If there's Gretchen in the way, why do we we don't care no. we, quick, we eat them just shoot the Gretchen you know yeah. now and if you're in guard I'm sorry if you have the artillery rules and you have guardsmen in the way we all know what's going to happen squish uh, call in artillery call in artillery <laughs> we're sure we have men there and and <laughs> exactly speaking They're of shooting should we talk about the rule about uh, the buildings and stuff like that? The light cover versus heavy oh, cover. Okay, cover and then, yeah. Well, and if you're behind the walls, building, you yep. can't see. Yeah. See, yeah. In other games, like in BattleTech and other ones, they had the things where there's the the walls were had so many points of damage. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you're hiding behind it, if you have a big weapon, you're like, okay, I don't care. I'm just gonna just shoot through the building, right? And eventually, either it's a really powerful weapon, it'll go straight through the building. Or a couple of shots blow and up the building. yeah, blow up the building, you know. And unfortunately, Warhammer doesn't have. But again, it, it's just that's a lot of bookkeeping for a game. Battle tech, and how many models did you run? Yeah, and arguments exactly. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Battle tech like four. Yeah. I, I do, and I don't like how terrain works in Eighth Edition, because it's really punishing for monsters. It's really punishing for vehicles. Because the amount of times that you can get a vehicle obscured and inside of a piece of terrain is almost nil. Yeah. Unless you have big horseshoe-shaped walls that you can park inside of and then, you know, like, peephole your way out of and still get some shots out. 
It's just not happening. So I like the ability for more units to be able to access cover. However, I don't like all of the extra caveats that they're putting back onto cover that makes it feel like older editions where cover became ponderous. No, oh, I remember some editions where I couldn't figure out if figures were in cover, what type of bonus or negatives they'd have, because there were so many things to, to think about. It, it made hiding or trying to get cover not fun, so we wouldn't do it anymore. I just gave up and run my orcs down the middle of the line. Yeah. If they get there, they get there. Yeah. If I hide behind cover, I lose too many before I get up there. Yeah. yeah. It's so on that note, I was I was gonna tag you guys with 3D printers, and I was hoping that you guys can make me a few markers, so like bright colored filament, whatever. So it's like <laughs> this is light terrain. So at the beginning of the game, because you're supposed to have that discussion with your opponent to say what all of it is going to be. So then you just tag it with a bunch of 3D printed markers. It's a good idea. You know, I got a better got a better idea for you. Do you see? Grab a rattle can, just spray it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Terminator. Really Terminator. Like me going there. Yeah. <laughs> or, the, um, or, or, or just like saying, the... what do you it's open field again? What do you mean it's another open field battle with no cover? <laughs> the little plastic tabs that uh, that you put on books to mark pages. Yep. Oh, there you go. Those on the terrain. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah <laughs> I could see that in um, so every table having a little cut sheet of yeah. you know what color means okay. what and then big yeah. tournaments just have all of their terrain marked out that's a good idea that'll okay so of... it's got an orange a blue and a black and that means this so that'll cut yeah. down a lot of arguments to a tournaments too right it's like no no that is that type of terrain or that type of yeah. cover period hmm. done. that's definitely a necessity for tournaments and organized events and and they've done stuff like that in the past too where yeah. like you've seen them do the six inch um objective markers like the the pie plate neoprene mats or whatever just to reduce arguments make it fast like this is your objective that's your end zone yeah so when tournaments adapt but they usually lead the way in that kind of stuff yeah when i used to run the uh, ottawa war machine club for the tournaments we used to have those uh metal rings the size of all the the templates and we'd put those down yeah so do you guys miss templates i do yes and no I, I do now that I started a Katachin army that's going to have a I, I miss them for the fact that it felt more real, um, yeah. but I, I, I well, don't miss the, the arguments. Covering... Oh, is that over it? No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Oh, that, that wasn't even it was the line of sight. Be like, oh, it scatters this way. But like, actually, it looks like it's more this way. I just be like, just <laughs> put the muscle down. There's, there's only one template that I miss. The flame? The vortex grenade. Oh yes! <laughs> no, it's the sphere, the half sphere. I've also got yeah. the ones from Storm Magic, the bigger ones. Yeah, the, the planets for Battle Fleet. Yeah. yeah. So What's cool. the ti the old pie plate one? That was the uh, yeah, the, the Earth Shaker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When the Bane Blade came out. Yeah. yeah, but here you go. This there there. Well, it wasn't just that big. There was also like four like Mickey ears on it as well. Those ones for yeah. Apocalypse. He's talking yeah. about like the first one that came out. With oh the main yeah, yeah, yeah. The main yeah. Yeah, the other big one was for Apocalypse. It yeah, it's basically the one like, that yeah. snapped together in four pieces too. That was like this. Jeez. Yeah. It was essentially five CDs put together, and then you could hit any one of the five. Yeah. And then you had to roll for which one oh, I would hit, and you could hit multiples. Yeah. 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 It's, See, it's the thing is, like, fun. I still miss, and the way I miss, I miss scatter rules because, I mean, I'm sorry, it's artillery and big things. It makes sense. There is, you know, a scatter. Right? Yep. It's, yes. again, though, I can understand why they're doing it because it cuts down on arguments and everything. I'd be happy if they brought it back just for our orcs. <laughs> Yes. Uh, <laughs> I would also be okay with that. <laughs> I yeah, play exactly. orcs because they're random and fun. Yeah, <laughs> like I still have the. Precise. It's just what just throw it that way. I, I've got the old you know. Ear We Go and Freebooter books here, and I yeah. love the stuff that would happen so, with their psychers, the, the Mad Boys. <laughs> the... Shoot snotlings yeah. into a marine armor is the most amazing. Yeah. Thing. yeah. <laughs> well, come on, they've used catapults to try to take down flyers. Okay? Yep. It's like. <laughs> How do you, but how do you bring that into a game? Like, seriously, how do you they believe it works. No, but how do you take that and put it into Warhammer 40k? So you're simply going like flame flamers could shoot planes and auto hit in eighth edition. <laughs> yeah. Does yeah. That's carrying over the I couldn't find anything one I, way or the other. I don't yeah, think they mentioned anything about it. I really <laughs> hope they don't. I hope they get rid of that. Yeah. So much. I mean, if they're gonna bring back templates, why not bring back flamer templates too? Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So. 
the other one that I'm, I know I'm super excited about, uh, I know JC's not as much, is the new campaign system. Uh, Actually, I, I am interested now, in now I that. I know that what's going to happen. Well, now that they've released more information about it, uh, like Brent, my favorite games have to be Necromunda, Mordheim, uh, and if we're talking about outside of Games Workshop, stuff like uh, Frostgrave, where it's campaign settings, where... Your, your characters, you invest time in them, they progress yep. and change over, over time. And now with yes. the, the new Crusader system, if, say, uh, Joe and I decide to have a game on a Tuesday night, and just a casual game, and then on the weekend, all of us get together for a tournament or whatever, stuff that happened in the previous game can continue on. I think that's just brilliant. Yeah. Like I like the narrative. I've always liked the narrative ones when they introduced those. I thought that was a like those my type of game. Is I'm not a big tournament type player. Or I just like the fun. But yeah. I'm also like yeah, a long term campaign. Where and I tried to run that for a while with only the strong. Where it's like okay, something that happened in the game before affects the yeah. next game. You know, it's like how well you did there gives you extra points for this. If you lost, you have less points or less reinforcements available to you. You know. Yeah. And I'm each. Just... It, each army has different settings. Like, okay, if you're Tal, this is what you want. If you're Necrons, this is what you want. If you're Chaos, actually, it's pretty funny because for the Chaos was pretty much they didn't mind sacrificing their own people. Yep. So one guy, he 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 understood the whole idea of the campaign and what it was all about. So he showed up with his guys, drove forward, and then sacrificed all his own guys in front of the other player. Wait, wait what? What did he just do? He just killed all his own guys because that was. The objective is to, you know... That was the objective, yeah. That's... So, can, I, I like narrative campaigns. I like those kinds of games. But again, it's the, the idea of if you're going to get a group of people to play, and, like, we tried doing it with Kill Team, and we had... How many were we? Like, six or eight of us? Six or eight, yeah. And, and it was just difficult to schedule a game. It's like, okay, I'm going to play six. against one opponent. And yeah. then it was like, well, if we should all just play together on the same day. Okay, yeah, so great. Hard. So what day does is everybody available should we do okay well we can't do this month so let's play two games next month and then everyone agrees we show up to that day someone or two people show up late and then they can only play one game because they have other engagements they have to go do and it just it just fizzled out too fast so i like the idea of a progressive campaign that your guy gets gets bonuses or or negatives and stuff like that but it's also with the group of people that i play with it's only going to go three or four games in and then it's going to die and we're going to reset it. And then it just, see, I, I had the exact opposite. Uh, I ran a kill team and a war cry campaign at, uh, out of the box. And we just said, okay, Monday nights is the night. If you show up, you show up, your game counts. If you don't, well, you're going to be behind. So it's, it, it, it's in your better interest to show up. And we had full houses almost every Monday night for months on end. Yeah, I think, uh, Jace, what we have to do is say, okay, if you don't play this time, you don't, yeah, that's it. You, you you end up as a loss or something. You know? Yeah, do it round, round based. Like, if you don't play yeah. by this date, then you lost that round and you move yeah. forward. My, my fear the original that we have with our group is it's too spread out across the city, and two <laughs> of the people in our group don't have cars and can't drive themselves places. Yeah. <laughs> There's buses. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I. Now, when, when they announced the campaign, I was all excited. There was a little bit of fear in the back of my mind of what happened when Age of Sigmar first came out, where they decided, oh, we're going to do narrative, and we have no point system. Well, I'm not a competitive player by any means, but I need a little bit of structure. Come on. Like, don't let me play, <laughs> when it, when it like, several out, nights like, against uh, a unit of six orcs. Like, yeah. Hey, I had a really surprising win that way. We just kind of brought whatever, and I brought six trolls, not realizing quite how good they were going to be in Age of Sigmar. Yeah. <laughs> and they just kind of walked through a bunch of stuff, and I'm like, I'm really sorry. <laughs> when, when Age of Sigmar first came out, it reminded me of whose line is it everywhere anyway, because it was like, story doesn't matter, and the points are made up. So just. <laughs> well, so, so was the table. back the fluff back then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Didn't they also have the rule that, like, you could yell? Or it's like whoever had the longest beard. So that that, that was beard. kind of pre. It officially came out as a get people into yeah. the mindset of this is a fun yeah. game and. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I remember when that came out, when Age of Sigmar first came out. Luke and I were in Toronto at Fan Expo and we're walking down the the, the convention yeah. hall, 
And a bunch of guys from Games Workshop headquarters stopped us. Hey, guys, have you heard of Age of Sigmar? They sounded like they were Jehovah's Witnesses or something. <laughs> and I told them, yeah, we're not interested. And they're like, why? And I just went through everything that was wrong with the game at the time. And they're like, their jaws dropped. They didn't know what to say and let us keep on going. A couple of months later, they came out with the General's uh, Compendium yeah, or whatever yeah. with uh, all the point systems. And Luke and I looked at it and went, yeah, we kind of have to get into this now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's come a long way and oh, I really yeah. enjoy it. And I, it's probably my favorite GW game at the moment. See, I like so. when they, in 8th where they introduced power levels for games, you know, for Warhammer 40k. It's like, here's your power level, as opposed yeah. to points. It's like, okay, if you want I to like take the power, power level, it's a little better. Yeah, you know, it's like, that would just take all the options yeah. you want for your units. And I think and that's what go. they said they're going to be using for the uh, the new campaign system, so. It's would, so much yeah. quicker for pickup games, and just oh, make a quick yeah. list, and it's it's just better. Like, oh no, I didn't grab that guy, I need to put it in this instead. It, it's just all there, like, it's so yeah. much faster. I always like found... It. That um, so as the points get adjusted, power level never gets adjusted. You know, yes, so I noticed that's, that. That's the problem with power level currently. Hopefully, yeah. as they adjust points up and down, because no, even sure. in eighth, when eighth first came out, there was a huge increase in points, like unilaterally across the board, and we're seeing that again with ninth, where GW is again raising the point values in order to get people to play smaller games or smaller model games and get more people into the hobby faster. But then I feel like, again, as time wears on, we're going to see the points creep down again. Yeah. So that people, you know, are enforced to buy more things because, you know, GW is a company and they enjoy yep. making it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much money. <laughs> but, uh, Their stock price was like a pound 80 when I was hired, and now it's trading at, what, almost eight pounds? Just over eight oh, pounds? It's, it's, it's crazy what they're, they're at. It's so, yeah, yeah. it's insane. So it's, the, the points yeah. creep is is okay. Like, I understand the game has to evolve and they have to, to change it all. The one thing I hope they get rid of and is FAQs, errata designers commentary chapter so, approved the, so a, a big faq they, yeah. they need to do updates and I, I i want them to do updates but it's whenever it's the okay i get a codex i get the rule book and then around christmas i gotta go buy chapter approved yeah and if i don't get that i'm screwed for the next little while so that okay, actually great. that's it makes sense so you're you're a marine player i the last codex to come out in 8th was the New Marines codex. Do you think that's really no. the ninth one? It, well, it wasn't the last codex to come no. out. There have been, uh, well, Sisters of, uh, Sisters came out. Sisters came out. And But there's been other ones also. Like, I'm, I'm sure there's been other ones. But it doesn't matter. They will get an update. Because all the codexes that have been coming out for the past year or so, they've said that... They're all working as desired in ninth edition. There will be some weird little updates that they're just going to tweak, but the I don't think points, they're going to the get and stuff like that. Yeah, they're not. I don't think they're going to get a new book right away. No, I don't. I, if anything, I think Necrons will probably get the first book. Um, <sighs> of course, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. But that... isn't the Psychic Awakening books. Going to be valid. They said that's going yes. To be they're valid. still going to be valid. They're, they're all yeah. valid. And same with Vigilus. Yep. Yeah. That was another problem. You had to buy Vigilus, and then you had to buy Psychic Awakening to yeah. have all your rules. Yeah. Yeah, and in they my case, my Psychic work. Awakening was really useless. <laughs> the thousand I, times one was at least was at least good. Yeah, the the Gene Stealer Cult one was horrible. <laughs> so, I also didn't well, like and, the fact that. Not, not, it wasn't. Book, it wasn't terrible for attack. Huh? Necrons and, didn't really matter. Oh, psychics. Oh, wait, we did. <laughs> yeah. And the new Marine Codex just completely invalidated GSC as an army. Yes. Yeah. Just one hundred percent. Yeah. The stratagems that they gave them, the new units that they gave them. No deep just, strike. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I was completely say, invalidated. As, and again, Joe can back me up. And other people who've done it, orcs stratagems. Man, <laughs> three lines of orcs: a wall of infantry, a wall of ludus. 
please permit a wall of cans in front. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, see, now I have a whole bunch of, I've got death copters, and now I have also the uh, the storm boys and stuff like that. So it's all like I'm going into the fast mobile army. But it's, again, it's like, see the enemy, kill the enemy. Yep. I've, I've got, I think I own just around 25,000 points of works for 40k and about the same for Stigmar. <laughs> <laughs> And I think this is where everybody stops listening to the uh, <laughs> the video. No, 25, almost 30 years now I've been collecting works. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm up about 800 points right now. <laughs> with, with Gaz coming into the fold and a few other models. Yeah, I'll be about a 12. How much is Gaz, by the way? He's is not he, available separately. He's, he's only available in the, the box that. Oh, no, I mean, for points, he's, he's for like points. two, I think he's 280 for points. Yeah. Well, he's a monster now. He's a concern. Yeah, need he's a... Uh, he's a new Yarrick model to go with the new Yarrick model. Yeah, they should have, it should have been Yarrick with him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, definitely. Because if all the people go against Gazgul... Yeah, should have would have been amazing. But I, the, I I'm putting see... on my tinfoil hat here. We've got new Sly Marlboro, the new female uh, sergeant, and the new colonel. My fingers are crossed for new plastic catachins. Well, yeah, they did post. Now? They did yeah. post something can you, can you yesterday, you... where they said uh, Kadia might be gone, but they're still okay. around. Blah blah blah. Is it Kadia or Kadia? Kadia. 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 Yeah, I've never said Kadia. <laughs> I've only heard Pat say it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've heard kids call them Canadian shock troopers and Trinidad warriors. <laughs> But, oh my uh, god, that'd be, that'd be awesome. I like the Trinidad Warriors. With a kid, they leave flag on it. Um, one of the <laughs> first... We once had this little kid come in the shop, and he looked at the monolith, and it just came out. He's just like, oh, there's a land raider for neck ones? And we just oh died. It was the most innocent and amazing thing ever. We're like, yes, that is the land raider for neck <laughs> I, I remember years ago, I was in a painting competition at the Games Workshop, and one of the guys I was up against had a uh, guard army, and they were all painted like Canadian military. Oh, really? With the little yes. flag, with the yep. flag deck yes. on them. Yeah, and he was he was ex-military himself, so yeah. he actually had stuff from his regiments, and it was really cool. He, he didn't win, but is he? He's an older guy, right? Uh, I yeah. think so. This this was when I I won with my uh, Forge World Nurgle army that I left at the store for like two years. Because <laughs> another guy. Who no, that's a different like... Nurgle arm. Okay. Yeah. I, then I brought those back yeah. to you, right? This was back at uh, yeah, when Saint Laurent and Bayshore both had games workshops. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think that guy used to work at, if it's the same guy I'm thinking of, he used to work at the museum, uh, the war museum, doing dioramas for them. Oh. Um, and he was very, I can't remember his name, but like me, but he's very particular about his staff, and he really liked Nick, and he liked coming and talked to Nick. And when I took over, he was kind of like, mm, I don't know who to talk to now. Yeah. Actually, he warmed up to me. If I recall, he actually uh, was part of the same uh, cosplay troupe as Nick was, the uh, World War II reenactors. Probably. I can't remember his name for life, me, and I should. I'm usually pretty good with names. Yeah. John, the hell off me, know him then. Probably. Yeah. Uh, I have a question now. With Knife coming out, which Primark, Loyal Primark, do you think will be the one coming out next? Loyal? Loyal? I don't think so. Chaos one? They're going to do no, a Loyal chaos. Primark. I don't think there's gonna be chaos first. I think yeah. I think you'll only see Ross! chaos. I think you'll yeah. see the four chaos ones done, and that's it. I don't think you'll see. That would be available. amazing, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Well, which <laughs> ones are still alive, right? That's where well, the possibilities yeah. are. And... Okay, well, this is this is okay. I've been reading in some of the lore uh, in the latest um, anthology book for the Horse Heresy, well, ones the Primark ones. Uh, there's one story which takes place in the warp, uh, shortly after things go on, where Korax is there attacking Lorgar. Interesting. And that's one of the reasons Lorgar goes, in, he's so damaged and so hurt, he goes in, into his hiding memory because he stays away for 10,000 years. It's because Korax is there, changed by the warp, but still loyal. Um, Yay! So so it's yeah, kind of so like Russ and the, uh, so Russ and, and his guard that yep. went into yes. the warp. So you've got Korak still alive, Russ is still alive, the Lion and Vulcan are still and alive. Khan is still alive. Yep. The Khan is alive. alive. Off into the ward. Yeah. Into the See, ward. yeah, and also yeah. Vulcan is well, Vulcan was alive, but he because you know, he's a perpetual, right? Yeah. But yeah. In the in the in the book in the Beast, he gets blown up. Yeah. You know, he sacrifices himself to blow up, and that so you haven't seen him for a long time. So I mean, like 
the lion's the easiest one to bring back because he's in or the imperial space. Creator. He's in imperial space. It's just like he, you know, it's like he. The watchers go, "Here you go, have a new guy," you know. <laughs> and how would that deal with the dark angels? You know, traitors. The, they're, <clears throat> you know, the stuff going on. They're doing. Yeah, traitor, yeah so traitor, dark traitor, angels and the fallen, and then you know the lion comes back. It's he's tactically the only guy who could stand up to Gulliman. Yep. Yeah. So I could I could see that being a nice like a balance in the imperial side having you know having the lion there and having you know well, Gulliman. It'd be kind of like if, if they like, wait a minute. How did you come back? And he's like, oh, I was just banging this other chick. She told me to take it from his poison. It's, yeah. it's all right. It's okay. Dad was watching. But imagine if yeah. Russ came back and saw Gulliman doing what he's doing and his his no, no, no. chapter Russ being. Back, could you make... Russ comes back with the church and the Inquisition going after Fenris all the time. Yeah. It'd be like, wait, you're attacking my guys well, for doing their job. First off, I think he'd have an aneurysm seeing his his guys as primaris. <laughs> there is that, but I, I can accept that. He'd probably accept that more than, wait, the Inquisitions come after me and the church and oh. the Dark Angels? All right. <laughs> what yeah. about this? What a, are we going to see Magnus side with the Loyalists against the Necrons once everything realizes what happened? Like, once he realizes what happens? No. I don't know. He's too far down the rabbit hole now. Oh, yeah. To go. You think? Okay. If anybody, he would drank be, the Kool-Aid. The Aramon that changes sides. Yes. You, well, yeah. So, wait, why, why would they be going against the ne- like, why would The Necrons are the, the new big baddie for 9th edition, right? Yeah, and the, what they what they've laid out uh, about extinguishing all the psychers in the universe. Yeah. Oh, so uh, the Blackstone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But wait, so. how come the Tyranids aren't still the big bad? Because they're come from oh, the galaxy. Give, give them their tent. They're they're, they're not the big baddies. They're just hungry. <laughs> they're the tenth edition, baby. So this is where I can see <laughs> Chaos joining the forces of the Imperium to protect themselves against the Tyranids, because the Tyranids are the end of all. The chaos, right? Because the warp would have no emotions, nothing with the Tyranids. Well, yeah, the yeah. Tyranids <laughs> also can't survive off the uh, off demons. Yeah, because no biomass there. No biomass, they just disappear. Yeah. Okay, how many? How long before you think the tenth edition comes out? Three years. years. Three or four years. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the the other podcasts and uh, YouTube channels are saying less than that. There are a lot of are really saying cool. ninth is just a little stopgap t- to tenth. Until, yeah. That People really said that about eight. Up. And eighth was only three years. Well, seventh. How long was seventh? But see, look Four? at look two at two and a bit because seventh, seventh was a redo right. of six. It had the same yeah. start. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was seven like, was like six point five, really. Yes. Yeah. 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 But from seventh to eighth, it was a not. Two, it was only like two and a bit. Yeah. But it was it was a really drastic paradigm shift where to go from seventh to eighth yeah. was a huge change. It was like oh, well, because I remember everyone who had a lot of people I knew had a lot of vehicles. It also was like oh yeah. wait, vehicles aren't so good anymore. Now it's just wow. Isn't that where we yeah. started this whole conversation? <laughs> yeah, that was great for me. I didn't have a lot of vehicles. I was like sweet. They came yeah. all the way around. I can run my horde again. And as an or- again, as an arc player who didn't have too many vehicles, it's like, oh, Great. wait, I got a lot of boys. I hate I painting vehicles. I don't vehicles. enjoy building and painting oh. vehicles other than, like, walkers and bikes. So it's like, I own a bunch. I just don't run them. Mm. <laughs> so now it's like, I should probably, you know, break out and battle wagon. But yeah, I, I don't think it'll be more than... I, m- the highest I say is three years. Yeah, same here. So the bigger question, PlayStation 5 or Xbox... PlayStation 5. Mini fridge. Give me my Xbox. PlayStation 5. <laughs> PC, baby. PC. Yeah. No, no, no. Pat, I spend all day in front of a computer. I come home, I don't want to be in front of a computer. No, exactly. To be fair, Patrick also yeah. doesn't have a PC. Patrick has a laptop. No, I have a... Remember, I bought a new gaming PC. Oh, uh, did you? I thought you only had yeah. that huge laptop. Oh, no. 64 my gigs mistake. of RAM. I take it back. Pretty card. I got I got kids, so if I'm gonna spend money on a good gaming PC, I'm just basically flushing it down the toilet. I buy an Xbox One or a PS4 or whatever, and those guys can knock the shit out of it all they want. I just have to buy new controllers. Yep. And yeah. every game that they ever come out for it is going to be playable on that. 
for the next until they come out with a new system. Yep. Yep. And you're paying what five hundred bucks for the console compared to three thousand bucks yes. for a gaming PC that you need to update and. <laughs> How's your new how's your new, how's your new computer, Patrick? Sorry, it's doing well. It's a new one. It's it's yeah. But I know in a couple of years it'll be like in, in oh. about two months. Two months. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm already I'm already looking at going. Okay, so I can increase more RAM and then get a second video card to bridge it. I yeah. just got a new hard drive, Brian. I just got a six terabyte hard drive to put in mine because my my other one's full. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk <laughs> about hard drive space. I do 3D animation and video editing. Yeah. I've got. Yeah. Uh, Chris understands video editing is like, okay, so 64 gigs of RAM and 10 gigs, 10 terabytes of hard drive space to use. And, yeah. oh, wait, I've done edit. Oh, I'm uh, done. I'm, I'm, I'm out of space. Cool video cards, right? But uh, I made sure well, I got the yeah. warranty that if my kids pour water on it, they'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Here's a new one. That's like, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, I also pay for a family of five internet connection because, <laughs> because <laughs> it's like, when, well, Chris understands if you're doing video uploads, you want the ultimate connection. Yep. Because yep. otherwise, it's oh, like, yeah. going, like. But I think I think in your case, Pat, you're paying for the family of five, one for you, and four for the beard. <laughs> well, you know why? Because it's, 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 it's the beard is like it's deflecting the signal. That's what it is. <laughs> it's a dead cage. <laughs> awesome. So, this has been great, guys. There was a there was a leak for the price tag for the PS5. And uh, it was 599 Great British Pounds. Oh! No. Oh. Oh. That's not possible. It's $1,000. $800. Yeah, it's like $1,225 Canadian. Oh, yeah. So no, it's it is 1200. my PC oh. for now, so that's good. Although, yeah. although England has had problems in the past with their consoles where they actually just match the same U.S. price. Yes. So they, yeah. they used okay. to But they, they said holiday that's time, so I got a bit of time to save up. <laughs> yeah. But not with ninth coming out. Crap. It's like the brakes that who cares? They're fucking yeah, I'm, I'm just dying. gonna buy my PC option points, like my second switch. <laughs> so what's everyone starting for ninth edition? I I mean like orcs. orcs. I'm gonna I'm gonna expand my orcs and I'm gonna start next Orc. rounds. Orcs. I wanna get into guard as well. Well I wanted to do guard when You were starting guard when I Jack, met you, Pat. He needs one army. He doesn't have one playable army right now. Okay, I, I can I'm just gonna say I have that. Orcs. I can bring out orcs. I can put orcs out he's, in the field. He's but never done it yet. <laughs> but they're not painted. But he's yet to field an actual army no, of I orcs. No, I have. I have. Against Joe. I have Kessel Run a few times. Okay, so I've never seen this. So, so I guess yeah. maybe it's... In pretty, my case... I was with, with uh, Jace. I've never seen a fully painted army. In, in my case, never. when they announced 9th, oh, I oh, said... Painted. Look at it. I said I'm, I was going to go Gene Stealer it. Cult. Uh, I bought in. I've got everything painted now. Uh, gotta love this pandemic. Uh, yeah. But I'm still not sure if that, they're the ones I really want to play. My love's always been with orcs. I've got a lot of orcs painted. Um, but I'm also going to keep an eye on my Tau, just in case Luke and I ever want to do doubles tournaments or whatever, then we can both field Tau. Yep. Here's the thing for your Tau. So what if I bring some Gundam stuff in? Oh I have Tell some really, that... really nice conversions. I was going to say, because does oh, not no. the Tau look like Gundam? Yeah. What, what you got over there? I'm, I'm... I just came in. Well, I'm going to More continue nights. the I new Night Army. I wish I could hold a second half of my models, but I'm not. I'm at Barry's. <laughs> when, oh, when wow. This is over, can you take some pictures of that Scythe Knight and post them in yeah. the chat? Actually, yeah. Actually, so... can you send them to me as well? Because I do, I got to get the next some gaming news out uh this week so i want to i always try to get pictures of people so oh i love the head oh, that, like, that head looks amazing Jesus. That, that's so creepy yeah. so can you so put, yeah, the, you uh, put pictures up in the yeah actually there. guys yeah. if uh, all of you could send me some links to some of your models i'll put them in the description and uh, on on the facebook group oh wow yeah. you'll have to wait till tomorrow i'm at Barry's tonight with the kids well it's okay I'm, I'm, I'm yeah the my video for some gaming so news will be going out till Tuesday or uh, Wednesday, so. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't have any models around me. I'm in my bedroom. I'm not allowed to look yeah. at my room. You're not allowed to have your toys in your bed? <laughs> I'm, pa I'm painting an Alpha Legion army for somebody. <laughs> Alpha Legion. Okay, oh, I was going to say then for Alpha Legion, what's the, you've heard the rumor about the third Primarch? Third now? Legion? 
<sighs> yeah, there, there's a, there's. Oh, yeah, that's a, nice. I hope that turns on. Good. Wow. Oh. Okay, I'm done. It's Dark Eight. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah. There's, 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 a spikes in the middle. there's a rumor about the third Primarch that it wasn't just Alpha and Omega. There was another Primarch for the Alpha Legion. Huh. Okay, so what's that one's name? That you haven't Delta, said. It's just a rumor. Omega, Centurion, uh, Epsilon. Yeah. Yes. Okay, where's the lights on that one? Three Fire Raptor. No, that one, the jets actually shoot fire out. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a drone. It just flies on its own. <laughs> it's got the propane lighters in there. The... <laughs> That's so cool. Well, there you have it. That was our first fireside chat. Thanks for listening. And please like and subscribe.